Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I want to show you the pitch time shifting algorithms in Reaper. Now, whenever we stretch or pitch shift our audio, it needs to have an algorithm to calculate how to do that and make it sound as pristine as possible. I have a project right here with a drum loop. Let's hear it. Now, if we alter it, let's go down here and bring the rate down. That change is going to be affected by the algorithm. Let's bring the rate up. And that'll also be affected by the algorithm. Or if we bring down the tempo, we could see up here it changes the item's rate and also uses the algorithm. And it's the same thing if we bring the tempo up, it changes the rate on the item using that same algorithm. And it's the same thing if we manually stretch it from here, hold on the PC, option on the Mac, and drag it. And that's also going to use the algorithm. And again, we can see the rate change on the item. And we could also manually stretch it the other way, longer. And again, see the rate on the item which is all using Reaper's algorithm. And if we double click the item, we could see the media item properties for that item. We could adjust the play rate manually over here, preserve the pitch when changing that rate or not, or manually change the pitch right over here. Let's bring it up three semitones. And we can see that pitch change in the media item. And we can bring it down in pitch the same way. Again, we'll see it in the media item. And all these changes are happening using Reaper's pitch or time shifting algorithms. And we can see those algorithms by going up here to the toolbar and hitting this button, or going to the file menu and going down here to project settings, or using the keyboard shortcut over here. And if we choose it, it opens the project settings dialog. And we can see over here the default pitch shift or time shift mode. And over here is the pitch shifter or time shifter parameter. And they work together. Then we have the stretch marker mode, which also works with the other two, but only if we're using stretch markers. So starting with the default pitch shift mode, the algorithm defaults to Elastic 3.3.3 Pro. That's the default, where it used to be Elastic 2.2.8 Pro. And if your default is set here, I'd recommend switching it to this one and going over here and choosing Save as Default Project Settings. So each new project you create will use this one as the default, as it typically sounds better. Now within this type, we could also choose Efficient, which is really used if you're using a slower computer, and you're doing a lot of pitch changing or time stretching, and your computer can't keep up. Otherwise, you can mostly avoid this option. We could also use Elastic Soloist, which is really meant for monophonic sounds like a synth playing one note at a time, or a trumpet or a sax, or even a bass or vocal. It's also useful for narration or voiceover, but it will vary by source. So sometimes the Elastic Pro will still sound better than Soloist. Now, along with the shift mode, we have the shifter parameter which works with it. So we have all these options to go with Elastic Pro. So with this algorithm, 
there's seven choices depending on how low or high the source material is in terms of pitch, along with using mid-side material or synchronized. And most pitches is the default. So if we choose it again, we can see it goes back to normal, which is the same algorithm. We could also choose sound touch, which has these options down here, or simple windowed, which has all these options over here, or finally, the rubber band library, which has all these options over here. But keep in mind, in most situations, the Elastique Pro should sound the best even when using the normal option, which is the default. So let's hear how these sound, starting with Elastique Pro and normal. This is what the loop sounds like before. Let's time stretch it over here. It still sounds pretty good. Let's change the settings. Let's switch the parameter to lowest pitches. Or highest pitches. I don't really hear a difference. Let's also try sound touch with the default. It seems to cut off the transients. Let's try high quality. I'm still hearing fade ins and fade outs. Let's try simple windowed. It doesn't sound much better. Let's try a different window size and a different fade. And that's even worse. Now let's try rubber band library with the default. Let's try the transients at crisp, the detector at percussive, and the pitch mode high quality. It still doesn't sound very good. I really prefer the default, which is the last Teak Pro, using normal, because it sounds about the same using normal or lower or higher pitches, at least with this loop. So let's try something else. I have some narration or voiceover right here. Let's hear it. I've known business people who were not realistic thinkers. Here's the good news. They were very positive and had a high degree of hope for their business. And if we want this to play back quicker, we can create a raise Reddit and just stretch it or compress it like this. I've known business people who were not realistic thinkers. Here's the good news. They were very positive and had a high degree of hope for their business. This algorithm sounds a little weird to me. So let's switch it from the default Elastique Pro to Elastique Soloist. And instead of using monophonic, let's switch it to speech. Let's hear the difference. I've known business people who were not realistic thinkers. Here's the good news. They were very positive and had a high degree of hope for their business. That sounds a lot better to me. Let's try another. I have a bass guitar right here. Let's hear it. Let's say we wanted to stretch this. Let's hear it. It doesn't sound great with the default algorithm. Let's try changing it 
Tuastik, Soist, Monophonic. That sounds much better. Or we could use OSDIC Pro and use one of the lower pitch algorithms. Let's try the rubber band library and switch this in pitch mode to high quality. Let's hear that. And let's say we preferred this one, but not for every track or instrument in our project. Instead of changing it here in the project settings, let's put this back to the default. Instead, we could just choose the track we want to change. Let's double click this track, which will select all the items on it, then double click the item, which opens up the media item properties, and then we could change it from here, from project default to any algorithm we want. Let's choose the rubber band library or the elastic soloist and choose monophonic. And now just these items are going to change. The other tracks in the project are still going to use the default or anything we set up in here. So we could have different algorithms for each track, for each item, or even each take. So that's pretty much it. That's the pitch shifting or time shifting algorithms in Reaper. I hope you learned something. Hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.